When was the last time you saw something created in After Effects that totally blew you away or totally shifted your paradigm on what was possible to create? For me, it was when I discovered joysticks and sliders. One day I was on Instagram and I came across this little animation by an account called Speedlag. And the animation was so good, I couldn't believe it was done in After Effects. You know, After Effects animations tend to have a certain look. Even to this day, several years later, I still look back on that original animation with admiration. By the way, if you're not following Speedlag, go follow him on Instagram. He does incredible work and his aesthetic is just plain beautiful. Now there are two tools that you can use to create head rigs like this. Joysticks and sliders and Duic Basel connectors. I've become familiar with both and in today's video, I'm going to attempt to cover the features, strengths, and trade-offs of both of these tools. Let's start with the first big difference between joysticks and sliders and Duic, which is the price tag. Joysticks and sliders is $40, whereas Duic is totally free. So if Duic can do the same thing as joysticks and sliders, why would you fork over the $40? That is the question I hope to answer in today's video. Before we answer that question though, let's review in a broad sense how these tools work. These tools work by linking five different poses to five areas in these boxes. And as you move your joystick around this box, it will transition between those poses. This consolidates the animation of many different properties and layers down into just one layer. Imagine having to animate all these layers and properties every time I wanted my character's head to move. Sliders work in a similar fashion, but are used to animate things that only need to move in one direction and are most commonly used to animate the facial features of a head rig. This method of creating joysticks and sliders that control various aspects of a character's. So with that brief overview of how these controllers work, let's highlight some of the big differences between joysticks and sliders and Duic. So on the surface, these two tools appear to work the same. However, under the hood, they're quite different. Let's start with the setup process. You set up your head rig with joysticks and sliders. You keyframe five poses on the first five frames of your composition. Starting with the neutral pose, then the right pose, then left, up, and then down. Then you simply select all your layers and you create a joystick. With the joystick created, each of those five poses corresponds to an area inside of this box. And as you move your joystick around, it will blend between those five poses, like I mentioned before. Now, Duic appears to work the same way, but the setup process is a little bit different. With Duic, you have to set up your poses for the X axis, so left, neutral, and right, and then the Y axis, up, neutral, and down, separately. By the way, Duet calls these things 2D sliders, but I'm just gonna continue to call them joysticks as well. When it comes to comparing Duet to joysticks and sliders, this is where I think Duet's biggest weakness becomes most apparent. And here's why. The position parameter of a layer is the only parameter that you can connect to both the X and Y axis of a joystick controller made with Duet because it is the only parameter that you can separate by dimension. For every other property or parameter, whether that be the rotation, scale, or most crucially, the shape path, which I'll talk about more in a moment, you have to decide which axis you want to connect it to. You cannot connect those parameters to both the X and Y axis of the joystick. With joysticks and sliders, I can keyframe the shape of my head to change in all five poses and connect that to my joystick. Whereas Duic, I have to choose which axis I want my head shape to change on. And in this case, for this head rig, I chose the X axis. So when my character looks up and down, the shape of the head actually doesn't change because I can't connect it to both the X axis and the Y axis. Oh, hey, and if you're finding that this video is helpful and you think other people would find it helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button. If YouTube sees that people are liking this video, it will suggest this video to more people who are watching similar videos to you and thus you'd be helping me because my video would be getting in front of more people and you'd be helping your fellow motion designers because they'd be able to find this video. So hit that like button. Okay, back to the video. When it comes to other aspects of the setup process, joysticks and sliders comes with some features that really make the setup process a bit easier in my opinion. For example, making adjustments to your rig after it's been all connected up is just plain easier in joysticks and sliders. In my opinion, you can quickly unlink everything or unbind everything, make your adjustment and then bind it all back up to the joystick. 
Now do it doesn't have anything like that. So if you wanted to mimic that, you'd have to manually go through each property and disable expressions, which would be time consuming. However, Duic, unlike joysticks and sliders, remains editable even when everything is linked up. So you don't necessarily have to go through and disable any expressions with the exception of shape paths because shape paths are not editable when they have expressions applied. With Duic, if you wanna make adjustments to a particular pose, you just move your joystick into that pose and then you can make adjustments to the keyframes for that pose. However, I find it to be a little irritating to have to constantly move my joystick around to the various poses to make minor adjustments. Also, as a side note, having a tool like MoBar, which can disable and enable expressions on multiple layers with one click, is super useful for this and kind of acts like very similarly to the bind and unbind tool in joysticks and sliders. I've left a link in the description if you want to check out MoBar. Joysticks and sliders also has this origin button which will copy the neutral pose and paste it to the current pose you're working on. I find it helpful when setting up new poses to start from the neutral pose and go from there. This is especially true when you're starting on the up pose. It's much easier in my opinion to go from the neutral pose to the up pose than to go from the left pose and try to create the up pose from there. Overall, I simply like the workflow of joysticks and sliders over Duic. It's more intuitive and I feel like I can iterate on it faster. Joysticks and sliders also has this ease bias, which basically adjusts how an object moves into their extreme positions and can be used in subtle ways to create a bit of parallax in the movement of the head and all the different objects on the head. Duic doesn't have an ease bias, however, with Duic you can create as many poses as you want to refine the way an object moves as you move your joystick around. So we aren't confined to just these three keyframes on the x-axis, we can add two additional keyframes to refine how the head moves from left to right. This way we can kind of replicate that same pseudo parallax effect. And that is a good place to point out one of Duick's strengths. You're not confined to just five poses. You can insert as many poses as you want. This is a good point to segue to sliders. But before we move on to sliders, let me just take a moment to shamelessly plug my character animation course, where I actually go through step by step on how to create a fully functional head rig, among other things like character design, rigging, and how to animate your character, of course. So I've left the link in the description if you wanna learn more about that course. With that said, let's get back to sliders. As much as I love creating joysticks in joysticks and sliders, I loathe using joysticks and sliders to create sliders. Duic sliders are just more capable. First off, sliders created in joysticks and sliders can only control two poses. If you wanna add a third pose, then joysticks and sliders will create two sliders, one for the first and second pose, and one for the second and third pose. Duic, on the other hand, will distribute these poses evenly along that slider. Second, I always seem to have this naming conflict issue when trying to create the UI sliders in joysticks and sliders, even though I have unique names for every slider. The most irritating part about that is that it doesn't tell me which layer is the problem layer. So I don't know why it keeps throwing up this error even though I've tried to rename everything. If you know how to work around this, please let me know in the comments. Because you can add as many poses as you want to a Duic slider, Duic sliders are just more capable. And because of that, I end up using them for way more things. And not only can you add more poses, but you can actually connect certain things up to only a portion of the slider. So for example, I have this slider that controls the up and down motion of this eyebrow, and I only want the eyebrows to rotate out when they reach the halfway point. So when I go to connect my rotation keyframes, I can set the maximum value to zero and now it will only use half of this slider to animate those rotation keyframes. Now that's just one example of the many creative ways you can use Duix sliders. So when it comes to joysticks, I think joysticks and sliders comes out on top. Easier to use and more capable. But when it comes to sliders, I think Duix wins hands down. So this brings me back to the original question. 
Is joysticks and sliders worth the $40 or do you just stick with Duick? And here's my honest opinions. I would buy joysticks and sliders even if it was just called joysticks because I just feel like the joysticks that Duick provides are a little too limited in my opinion. So I personally use a combination of the two, but I'm interested to know what you think. Have you sprung for joysticks and sliders or are you sticking with Duick? Let me know in the comments section below. Now, if you found that this video was helpful, hit that like button, do me a favor, help me spread the word. And if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed with that bell notification turned on so that you're notified the minute I come out with a new video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you later.